Hi guys, I'm Madison and I've been at Davidson Academy for two years now. When I first started Davidson Academy my junior year of high school, I felt so to place I didn't like it and I didn't know anybody. But as it turns out, Davidson Academy has been one of the biggest blessings in my life. Not only have they taught me so much about God and what it means to be a Christian and helped me grow in my faith and take a step further in my relationship with God, they've also taught me what it means to be in a family-like community like school, which is what Davidson is. It's one of the things I love about it. Um, it's really hard to grasp the idea that I'm a senior, I'm going to be graduating here soon, and that I'm not going back into that hallway and to just keep resuming this normal routine. But I'm so grateful for my time at Davidson Academy. I honestly wish I'd been there a lot longer. But I know that these friendships and bonds and memories I created, I will always hold on to and cherish forever because they are spe so special to me. And I'm just so grateful for my time at Davidson. It's really been a blessing. It's changed my life in just so many aspects. And has really changed my relationship with God. And yeah, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Claire and I just wanted to share some of my reflections about my time at DA. So just based on my own experience, I think that DA does a really good job of encouraging you in your spiritual journey but without forcing it on you or forcing you to believe anything. So I think that Coach Trotter in class, he will explain what he believes and why that's what he believes but he also leaves it open for us to decide what we believe ourselves just based on the information that we've been given. So looking back on it, I've realized that a lot of my current beliefs and stuff that I believe now has come from those class discussions and debates and even just assignments and stuff like that. And it's not because it's what I was told I have to believe, but I was given the freedom to figure it out for myself, but also with encouragement and guidance from people that I trust and people who I think are very wise. Um, advice that I would give to younger students, and it's so obvious, but I would just say don't take it for granted, like chapels and your Bible classes and stuff, they can seem like a chore, but if you open yourself up and just listen, just every once in a while, just let yourself be open to hearing what is being said, then I think some of it is going to be words that are coming from God that you might need to hear, and those are the little bits that are gonna stick with you for the rest of your life and I think that is the important part. I'm just grateful to DA for teaching me how to defend my beliefs, especially since I'm about to go out into a world where people believe very different things from me. I think that I am better equipped to defend what I believe. Um, and also, I think that DA has taught me that the most important thing that God wants us to do is love him and love other people. And I think Davidson Academy um, no matter who you are or what you believe, I think that the people here just genuinely want to see you be the best version of yourself that you can be. And so I think that DA has helped me get closer to being the person that God created me to be. So I am really grateful for that. And that's all. Thank you. Hey guys. Coach Trotter was like, hey, did you think about Senior Reflection Chapel? And I was like, I don't really feel like crying through all of this. But then the more that I thought about it, the more that I prayed about it, I realized that God has given me a story like he has given the rest of us and that we are to share that and to share our struggles so that we can help other people and that pe other people can help us. We all learn from each other and yeah, here goes nothing. <laughs> um, I have had the hardest year of school I've ever been through. I lost my grandfather in the fall, which of course is really hard for anybody, like for losing a loved one. And um, then I broke my finger, which was supposed to be, oh, you broke your finger, you'll be fine. Which has been the hardest recovery. And like, that's just, it's been the hardest thing that I think I've ever gone through because losing a loved one like, you know that that's happening. You know, like, God's got a plan and, like, everybody's gonna die. And I know that he's in heaven and he he's doing great. But then when God puts two surgeries and four months of recovery in your path, that kind of hits you. Like, you don't, 
you don't have a warning for that one. <laughs> and it's just, it's been really, really hard because I'm so active and like I'm an athlete and it's just really changed everything that I've done. And now we're stuck in a pandemic. So we're doing great guys, <laughs> surviving. But um, what I've clung to all of high school, and this can apply to whatever situation you're in, whatever God puts in your path, this literally is like, it's just, it's perfect. It's God speaking straight into your life and like smacking you across the face and like, listen, like just listen to me, stand still and listen. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. This is James chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. Uh, yeah, verse 2 and 3. Um, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Pure joy of trials? That doesn't make sense, first of all. But that's like with the pandemic. We constantly say, oh, I would just wish I had a day off. Oh, my body is so sore because I play sports. Like, I just wish that I just had, like, one day off. I wish that my life could slow down. And, um, oh, I'm so worn out from school. I wish that we can just, like, I wish that it'd be over with. Um, oh, wouldn't it be nice to, like, sleep in for once? And then God gave us this time, and now, at first... It was like, oh, okay, like I could use a day off. And then God's given us all this time in the world to create habits that we can stick with, to break habits that we were making, to do whatever you wanted to do because God gave you the time to do it. And um, there's joy in that. There's so much joy in his plan no matter what it is. Whether you break bones or have an injury or you go through something really, like, physically, like, you go through something, God has a plan for that. Because you can be mentally strong all day long, but then when something happens to your body, when something life-altering, like, physically happens, it's just, there's, like, no headspace for that. Like, you can be mentally strong, but that's... That's like hitting like a wall. But God can God says consider it pure joy when you go through many trials because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. So whatever God is putting you through, whatever situation you're going through with a friend, whatever uh bad grade you made on a test, whether you're failing a class or you don't know what college to go to. I I know how that feels. When like just things like that, he's giving us perseverance. Even this crazy pandemic that we're going through, everyone is struggling right now, but God is preparing us for the future because he has a plan. We have no idea what that plan is. I had no idea where I was going to college for forever, but God has a plan and God didn't reveal that plan to me because he knew that I wasn't ready for that and he knew like he has his own timing and that's for everything, no matter what it is, whether it's you lost a loved one and it really, really hurts right then, but God has a plan and he knows what he's doing, or whether it's um, just what we're going through right now, or an injury, or um, just things that happen in daily life, even the little things, God's got a plan for it, and he knows what he's doing, and we shouldn't doubt that. So yeah, thank you. Hi, so uh, I wrote everything down as to not forget it. So just bear with me if I'm like not looking at the camera 100% of the time. I just don't want to forget anything. Okay, we are stuck in a pandemic. This pandemic has put a harsh halt to many of the things that I've been preparing for my entire life. But especially the past 11 years, I've been at Davidson Academy. I've been waiting to pass the torch to the rising senior class, to walk with the kindergartners as they journey into the next phase of their life, to proudly show via teacher what my future plans are, 
to dance the night away one last time with some of the best people I've ever known and to walk across the stage in front of my peers, my teachers, my family, and receive that diploma. High school is not easy. It is full of drama and headaches and homework. It is parent-teacher conferences because of failing a push. It is reading days. It is having your Hemingway teacher. It is decorating lockers for birthdays. It is feeling hurt because your best friends left you out of something. It is editing senior research papers, the class period before they're due. It is getting Panera and Chick-fil-A and Sonic for lunch. It is rehearsals that go till nine o'clock. It is trips in the middle of the ocean. It is tears and laughter. God calls us to love him, but he calls us especially to love others. John 15, 12 reads, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. All I ask is that you love each other. That's the best advice that I could give. At the end of the day, you're not gonna look back at your peers and think, wow, I'm so happy I was mean to them. Love each other. We're a family, but we can only be a family if you're willing. And I know some of you aren't willing and that's okay, but you can't hold others back who are. Love each other. Through love, I have found joy. In the days when I would rather be anywhere but school, when I went to lunch and I didn't eat, or when I cried myself to sleep, I could always think back to the good memories, to the people who I love and who love me. Your high school career is made by the people you love. You see it in football games, pep rallies, fall balls, class trips, field days, sleepovers, parties, chapels, and everyday classes. I wouldn't know these things without DA because DA has taught me that no matter your math grade or your thoughts on Spanish 3, you are surrounded by good people and good memories. So before I conclude, I just want to say thank you to the good and the bad, to the Adams family, freshman and senior year fall ball, the Australia New Zealand trip, bad grades in geometry and APUSH, Mr. Ishii's book choices, my really good grade in algebra 2, Drama and theater, hallway decorating, that one random math trip to the escape game, best con, chosen, strength and conditioning, AP human geography, poetry slam, band concerts, pep rally wins and losses, but especially beating the juniors, film fest, my friends decorating my locker and taking me to breakfast for my 18th birthday, reenacting an entire musical with Maya at a retreat, summer parties at Hayden's, an AP test in the baseball facility, Concerts with Lucy, Spanish 3 with Profa Fan, theater banquets, AP World History, retreats, Sweet 16 parties, 10th and 11th grade mock trial, dissections in biology with Bella, the St. Louis trip, big stuff with Claire and Esty, quilters, Christmas parties, JTF junior and senior year, Freaky Friday, prom, McKay's with book club, dance recitals, Brooks gigs, road trip to Cincinnati, SEYA, the protest, more parties, state games, canoeing, the drive-in, Dear Evan Hansen with Winnie and Bailey, powder puff freshman and senior year, homecoming, worldviews, photo shoots during English, fall break, Skylar's talent show performance, hot end houses, mission trips to Jamaica and the Bahamas, praise band photos with Bailey, English with Carnes, junior year's boys soccer, junior year boys soccer, Lunch plans with Erica, Sarah, Anna Marie, Claire, and Liz. Susicle, the cruise. AB Calculus. Physics and chemistry with Claxton. Halloweens with Sophia and Sam. My many miniature crushes. Senior chapel. And every other memory. Now, I may have lost you during that, and that is okay. My main point is this. Love. Find the good in all the bad times, and find the love in all the hate. You're going to have days when you literally just want to fight someone. But remember that God calls us to love. He loves us and he wants us to love others. Your stress and heartache are nothing that God can't handle. And trust me, we've all been there. Your life is full of wonderful and exciting times. So just seek love and joy and you will be fine. Hey guys, um, 
I just wanted to share a little bit about my journey through Davidson Academy and offer a bit of advice for you students still at Davidson. Um, first of all, I've gone to the Davidson since K4. And that means I've seen the good and the bad side of Davidson. I've been here my whole life and I know it's not perfect. It's pretty good, but it's not perfect. But I will always be thankful to Davidson for showing me so many amazing people, people that have changed my life in so many different ways, some positive, some negative. But in the end, it shaped who I am and it helped me get, helped me become the person I am now. And I will forever be grateful for that. So thank you, Davidson. Um, I would also like to offer some advice. The reason I was shaped the way I am, the reason I'm happy with who I am, is because of the people I surrounded myself with. It's so easy to get in with certain people that aren't necessarily good for you. And I want to urge you to stay away from that. I want you to find friends that don't want to change you, but want to make you the best version of yourself that you can be. They want to make you better, but they don't want to make you different, if that makes sense. Because it's so, there's a fine line. And it's hard to distinguish sometimes, but you need to find it. Also, high school is going to suck at times. If it hasn't already, it will, I promise you. And it's so important to have good friends that will be there to help lift you up when you're in a bad place. And the good thing about Davidson is that it is a small school and it's a pretty intimate environment. So we're able to talk to teachers and I encourage you, if you're struggling with something, if you have questions about anything, ask a teacher, ask your friends. They want to help you. They want to answer your questions. Do not leave Davidson Academy with unanswered questions, wondering what if, or feeling like you missed out on an opportunity. Take the chance. And if you're hurting, if you're in a bad place, talk to someone. If, you, if your friends are real, they'll want to help you through it. I promise you. So that's pretty much all I have. Just um, be careful with who you surround yourself with because that will shape who you become. Anyways, um, thank you Davidson Academy for everything you've done for me over the past 14 years. Thank you to my peers. Um, I love you guys. Bye. Hello, I'm Esty. I would be lying if I said Trotter wasn't forcing me to do the senior reflection. It is hard for me to come to terms with the fact that my senior year is over. Um, I don't think I'll realize it until I'm moving into my college dorm. I wanted to reflect on all the amazing memories and times that I've had at DA, but I think I would just end up crying. So I'm just gonna give a couple pieces of advice that I wish someone would have told me before my freshman year. Um, my first piece of advice would be not to take this for granted. Throughout high school, I think I got a little more pessimistic towards just school in general. And I would really urge you to just sit down and realize how blessed we are to be at DA, how blessed we are to be able to go to a school where you can freely express your religion and not be judged, how blessed we are to have teachers that care so much about you and that want you to succeed so much, how blessed we are that we have faculty members that care so much about our seniors that they are still striving to get them to be honored even in the middle of a pandemic. We are just so blessed to be at DA and I'm sitting here now thinking about all the times that I left school early. You can look at my attendance record, it's really horrifying. Um, and now I'm sitting here doing anything to just go back to school and roam the hallways, make fun of Coach Swan, just 
I wish I was back at school. So don't take it for granted. These can be some of the best years of your life. My second piece of advice was actually from Miss Higgins. She told me this on a coffee date, and I don't even think she knows that this replays in my mind all the time. And it's the phrase that Jesus is better. I think in high school, we get really caught up and stressed out about things. And if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, when you say these words that Jesus is better, it brings such peace to your mind and to your heart. It is such an important thing to remember in any sort of circumstance. And I will carry this phrase all throughout college, and I think it can really change the way that you look at life. So that's all I have. I hope that some of this ring truth in you. Thank you, DA, for all that you've done for me. Thank you, Trotter, for putting this together. And yeah. So the thought of high school coming to an end, I believe I've had a pretty good high school career. I think about each year and the highlights of each year. Forgive me for a moment while I take a quick trip down memory lane. Freshman year was filled with new friends coming to DA, a certain spider's web, an interesting lunch table, that time we left Lucy at a pizza place in Chicago, my first experience at the opera, Frills, and that time we went to Sorrell's house on his birthday. Sophomore year saw Sweet Sixteen parties, the evil Jerry Causey in AP World History, me playing a sociopathic eight-year-old, Julius Caesar in Karn's English class, my addition to the Creatures of the Night, protests, bodies, parts falling off, and this could be your finest hour. Junior year brought excellent concerts, a push, the worst Christmas pageant ever, an interesting twist on the Pledge of Allegiance, a state championship, and conducting a band. Senior year consisted of canoe trips, going to the drive-in, the best way to play truth or dare, faking my identity, angering waiters, playing a bird with a one-feathered tail, meeting Ryan McCartan, a winning soccer team, I bet that's something you didn't know about me, not actually being a bad driver despite popular opinion, and of course, a pandemic. When I look back at all these things, I think to myself, I'm so lucky that my high school experience has been so positive. Even though I dealt with horrible online teachers, bad math grades, threats from a parent, who wasn't mine by the way, not eating, hating every moment when my alarm went off at 5.30, and exclusive friends at some point during these four years, I still feel like high school was good. The biggest thing I've learned from my little life in high school is that every year is complicated. For every time you're the lead in the play or stop the goal or get an A on a test, there's a jealous reject, or a panic attack, or a D. For every time you feel good about your friends, there's another weekend when you aren't invited. But that's life. Life is complicated. I could choose to look back on high school and see all the days that I didn't want to roll out of bed or fail the test, but why would I do that when I could think about every concert with Lucy, laughing with Maya, playing Piano Man with Zach, solving all the world's problems with Sophia, parties at Hayden's, or sleepovers with Lily? To all the seniors, I just want to encourage you to enjoy thinking about all the happy things that we've seen over the years. And to all the underclassmen, just always remember every bad day you think will never end, that when it's over, all you want is one more time to hear the bell, open your locker, eat in the cafeteria, or wear the stupid uniform. Philippians 4.8 says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. When I came to DA in sixth grade, I wouldn't have believed it if you told me that someday I'd be here wishing for one more day. But DA and high school have taught me that life is hard and complicated, but in the middle of all the hard and all the complicated, it's really beautiful and something to always cherish. Hey DA. Elizabeth. I mostly go by Liz now. I came to DA my freshman year with a very black and white worldview, and I'm leaving with the muddiest gray you can imagine. I've always had questions regarding faith, objectivity, and God that were usually shut down with a kind answer. But at DA, those questions were encouraged and welcomed, and Davidson really provided this environment where I felt comfortable to ask tough questions, and that heavily impacted my spiritual development. I now feel confident asking questions about God, and I really owe that to DA, so thank you. And for all the students who still have time here, I urge you to use your time not only to learn and achieve your personal goals, keep doing that, that's awesome, but give the community at DA a chance. I avoided getting involved at first, and it's really one of my biggest regrets from my time here. I hope you don't make that same mistake. In the short time that I was here and involved, I made so many memories that make this place and the people so hard to leave. 
I came to DA with the mindset that DA was just a building with a bunch of classrooms and a good football team. I was right about the good football team, but this place is full of life, incredible stories, and even better people. You just have to give it a chance. Thank you. Hey everyone, so I know this is a little informal, but I have made my little space here at home and I've even put on some instrumental music in the background to break the awkward silence since I am here instead of in front of all of you in the gym like I always thought it would be. But nonetheless, I am still so excited about this senior chapel. And as I reflected on my past four years at Davidson, I knew that I wouldn't want to leave you guys with any other message except for one, of finding your identity in Christ and making your faith your own. For me, over these past four years, um, the key factors in finding my identity in Christ and making my faith my own are just realizing that it's not about me at all and that God doesn't, <laughs> this is a quote, excuse me, but um, that God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the call. So it's not anything to do with your platform, or your position or your connections or even your age, your situation. Because I know in high school, the future can feel so far away and God's purpose for your life can just seem so far out of grasp. But everything starts with small beginnings. And I'm just gonna share a little bit about what that looked like for me. And I'm gonna start with reading from 1 Timothy 4, and this is 1 Timothy 4, 8 through 16. But godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both this life and the next. We have put our hope in the living God, who is the savior of all people, and especially those who believe. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech and conduct in love and faith and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to publicly sharing scripture, preaching and teaching. Don't neglect your gift. Let me read that again. Don't neglect your gift. Be diligent, give yourself holy, persevere in these ways, and you will not only save yourself, but all your observers and hearers. So, in talking about finding your identity in Christ and making your faith your own, uh, I reflected on just my freshman year coming to Davidson from a school that I'd been at first through eighth grade with a class size of 20 and how the transition to Davidson, which is slightly bigger than that, um, and had a lot of situations that I had, not situations, but at my old school, I had known everyone my whole life and knew everything about them, whereas at Davidson, I was kind of going in on my own. Um, it made me stand on my own and kind of figure out who I wanted to be for the next four years, which at first I was totally lost in, but I just remember I had honors, it was biology, honors biology, Miss Brees's class, first period every day that year, and she would remind us for every day that year that if we knew a senior girl who wanted to lead the high school girls Bible study, the spot was open. And I felt this just tugging at my heartstrings, but I let some of those same things, the position, the platform, the connections, the status, I let that disqualify me because I thought I had to be qualified to be called. Um, and I would just say, I'm too young. I'm a freshman, I'm not a senior. No one knows me, no one would come. And so it wasn't until that March that we had a chapel speaker named Shane Sisk, who actually pastors um, in the youth ministry at the church I attend, Long Hollow Baptist. I didn't know that at the time, but it had such an impact on my life. He talked about how good kids are the worst thing for the kingdom of God. And that's exactly the category in which I felt always saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I'm not doing anything wrong, so I don't have to do anything different. Because good kids just saying, oh, I'm good, I don't have to be different that doesn't add any fruit, that doesn't produce any fruit, that doesn't plant any seeds. And whenever you take even the smallest step, it leads to a bigger picture. And so that day I went and I started that Bible study and it hasn't been smooth sailing ever since or anything, but with each small step, the bigger steps do become easier. And I just wanna encourage you guys today that take that first step. Don't worry about your age or your connections, your platform, your purpose, the list I keep repeating. Um, just know that it's not about you at all. It's about the Holy Spirit empowering you. Um, and that whenever you do take that first step, 
leads to more steps that don't just affect you, that aren't about you, but it affects others and it adds to the kingdom of Christ. It bears fruit, not just in your life, but in the lives of all those around you. So how are you going to impact your environment in the years, in the time to come, whether that's college, whether that's junior, freshman, sophomore year? Um, so that's just what I want to leave you guys with today. And I guess I'm just going to pray us out. Dear God, thank you for giving me this opportunity to just leave one last message with this school that means so much to me and has made me who I am. God, I pray that you're working in the hearts of every student who's hearing right now and just telling them where to begin because now's the time. In your name I pray. Amen.